So, after that little technical uh, glitch, good morning and uh, welcome everyone to the Virtual Unitarian Universalist Church in Meriden uh, Meeting House. My name is Jeff May and uh, we're, uh, we're, as I said, we're kind of making this up as we go along this morning. We've never done things quite like this before, obviously. Uh, so, uh, and we're, we're also playing with some new software that we're just learning that uh, we hope to enable us to uh, uh, to be able to do this and and, uh, and do this in in a way that uh, that makes sense. And uh, with us this morning we have John Seppels who uh, has some uh, opening remarks for us. John, hi. It's uh, so great that you could all join us this morning. Uh, I'd like to uh, call your attention to weekly email newsletter and our social media for some announcements. Um, there are also a few others that I would like to call your attention to at this time. Uh, our current plan for combating social isolation and ministering to each other through this time includes an online worship service every Sunday at 10.30 a.m. on this channel. Uh, Weekly gatherings for reflection and sharing via Zoom uh, will begin this week tentatively Wednesday at 7 a.m., uh, but confirmation and details will follow shortly. Uh, we also plan to make calls to members uh, from our pastoral care team. And we will, Reverend Tony will be hosting weekly online lunch conversations and we are also looking to see if we can help facilitate some cooperative child care. And last but not least, committees and teams can continue to meet uh, via Zoom video conference. Chairpersons will be provided with access to a church Zoom account for hosting their meetings. Uh, details on that coming soon. Uh, our second announcement is it's not too early to think about what you'll do for the auction, uh, assuming that we'll all be able to meet in person for an auction uh, by Saturday, May 23rd. Can you help address envelopes to local businesses asking for gift certificates, follow up with phone calls, pick up the gift certificates? Do you know someone, maybe even yourself, who'd be willing to offer a weekend at their vacation house? someone who performs a service that buyers want or need. Please ask on behalf of our church. For more information about the auction or donation form, contact Janet Hiller at janethiller at outlook.com. Uh, we hope you enjoy this new worship format. And if you do, please share it with your friends. And now we'll have a message from our minister, the Reverend Tony Lorenzen. Hi, beloved. I'm sorry we can't be together this morning, and I'm sorry I can't be leading your service this morning. These are incredibly strange, difficult, and trying times we're living through. Unprecedented in public health in our lifetime. But these are the times when we are called to be our best selves, to use the wisdom of our Unitarian Universalist faith and to live by that faith. We are a people of faith. We are a people of hope. We are a people of love. We are a people of courage. We will lean on our faith. We will practice compassion. We know that there are people dealing with anxiety and depression and addiction and many physical and emotional ills every day of their lives. And for those folks, right now is going to be an even more trying time than usual. And all of us are feeling some level of anxiety and depression and fear. So let us be kind to each other and lift each other up. Let's drop petty grievances and not get so upset at inconveniences. Let's share with each other, not only with each other at church, but with our neighbors. Let's not hoard resources. For at times like this, those who are poor and have less resources are going to find it much harder to get by. We are lucky if we can work from home, if we have health insurance, 
if we have a little bit of income that can make sure we have food and supplies where we live, there are many people who don't. So let's share wisely. Let's use our privilege wisely. Let us remember to preach our own good news. This is not God's will. No one has it out for us in humanity. We will trust in science. We will trust in medicine. We will trust in the good faith of people of good faith. We will fight racism and oppression when it rises its head during these times. This is not a Chinese virus or a foreign virus. Viruses have no race, gender, sex, nationality, religion. They are indiscriminate in who they affect and who they kill. Most of all, let us all be brave. Bravery does not mean not being afraid. Bravery means being afraid and carrying on anyway. And that's what we're called to do. And each of us will find that courage within us to go on and do what we need to do. Let us stay in touch. Use the internet, use your phone. During this coming week, we will be rolling out a lot of resources online. Our pastoral care team will start to check in on everyone on a regular basis. We will make announcements about midweekly groups via Zoom where we can share coffee together, have lunch together, hang out together, do joys and concerns together. You are a wonderful, brilliant, creative, loving people. Now is the time more than ever we are called to live into that reality. We need to be the church for each other and all those around us, our neighbors, our families, our friends. We are not alone. We have each other. And we are connected to people of good faith working to bring this public health crisis under control as fast as possible. I love you. And I will be checking in on you. And I will be leading worship with you again soon. Until I speak with you again or hear from you again, go in peace, holy ones. And remember, you are holy. Thank you, Reverend Tony, for that. I'm going to light our chalice this morning. Uh, our friend Rebecca is here with us. And uh, I think the, where is the uh, little lighter set up? do this I, you know that's the thing when you're doing something for the first time you gotta you know it, it, it just always doesn't work out quite as uh, as plans so uh, Sandy if you want to go ahead and uh, we light our chalice this morning with these words in the mystery of life about us there is light it gives us a place to be a place to grow to rejoice together it opens the pathways to love. In this gathering of friendship, there is freedom. Let the light we kindle go before us, strong in hope, wide in goodwill, inviting the day to come. We gather in the midst of uncertainty. And it is uncomfortable and unfamiliar. We long for the patterns that make up the rhythm of life. We long for the embrace of friends, the smiles, the laughter, the comfort of a familiar place. And yet, as imperfect as this medium may be, it does allow us to join in with each other and share. We can come together to affirm our connection celebrate our shared vision of a world as we would see it, a world where all are respected, where compassion and justice are the centerpiece, where our connection with each other and every person and every being, and our connection with this planet we call home is honored. This time before us is unsettling, but our faith is made for times such as these let us pause for a moment, relax, and prepare ourselves for each of the next moments.
A reading from Rainer Maria Rilke, translated and adapted by Stephen Mitchell. Have patience with everything unresolved in your heart, and try to love the questions themselves, as if they were locked rooms or books written in a very foreign language. Don't search for the answers, which could not be given to you now, because you would not be able to live them. And the point is to live everything. Live the questions now. Perhaps they into the answer. Before I start uh, with the mar remarks I prepared for this morning, I just want to remind everyone uh, that we will be having a time for uh, shared joys and shared concerns uh, uh, later on at the kind of the normal time uh, in our service. Uh, already some folks have shared. If you didn't see the uh, share notice, um, the uh, uh, address to send your concern or your celebration, your Thanksgiving to, is candles at uumeriden.org. So we set up that special address specifically for this purpose. And I do have, uh, we do have several that have come in already. So uh, uh, if you do have a celebration or a concern or something you'd like to share, please send that to candles at uumeriden.org. Religious liberalism depends on the principle that revelation is continuous. These words by 20th century Unitarian theologian James Luther Adams form the bedrock of our Unitarian Universalist faith. At its most basic level, it affirms our belief that no single source of wisdom, no book, no prophet, <clears throat> no one way of understanding where we came from, why we are here, or what happens on the other side of that great mystery is uniquely authoritative. Everything is subject to question. In the words of the song Wayawa, which we sing in our uh, Singing the Journey hymn book, we are going. Heaven knows we are going. Heaven knows where we are going, but we know within, and we'll get there. Heaven knows how we will get there, but we know we will. Certainty in the midst of uncertainty, it's in our DNA. The earliest evidence of human religious belief and practice we have found is not surprisingly associated with ritual burials in Europe and the Middle East as far back as 70,000 years before the Common Era. A central theme in almost every religious tradition is an attempt to answer the questions, what happens after we die? Where do we go? Do we simply cease to exist? Do we go to some better place? Will those who have gone before us be there to greet us? Are those who lived well rewarded? Are those who did evil punished in some way? Do we perhaps return in some other form as some other person or some other creature? Do our souls walk among the living, invisible and imperceptible, except in rare moments when the veil is lifted, or do we, in the words of Dan Fogelberg, melt into a river of souls? We humans don't deal with uncertainty 
especially when it comes to those big questions. Where do we come from? What, where, what are we? Where are we going? Throughout human history, people have attempted to answer these questions in an attempt to create some form of certainty, some answer to the questions, some assuredness that I matter. It is important that I am here, that there is something more than this. Gods were imagined, deities, that, deities were created, deities that controlled all the aspects of life and death. Scriptures were written explaining the origins of the universe, the beginning of time, narratives to detail how civilizations developed, patriarchs, matriarchs, prophets of God or the gods who came to a people and a time with answers, certainty. Here is where we come from. This is what we are. This is where we are going. And that's one of the things that's unique about our Unitarian Universalist faith. Revelation is continuous, Adams reminds us. We don't know all there is to know. And in fact, we may never have the answers to all of those questions. Where do we come from? What are we? Where are we going? Our Unitarian Universalist tradition answers mystery, mystery. Life is a riddle and a mystery. You're, you're singing it now. I can hear you all. I can hear you. We are made for times such as these, times of uncertainty, when we do not know what tomorrow will bring. When we don't know what next week or next month or next year will bring. When we don't know how long this will go on. When we don't know when normal will return, if normal as we have come to know it ever returns. We as Unitarian Universalists know about uncertainty. It's in our DNA. So what now? How shall we be in this time before us, wherever it takes us and however long it lasts? We find that answer in our Unitarian Universalist tradition as well. We do it the same way we face every moment of every day because we understand that each moment is precious. And the next moment, and the next, and the next, and the next, and the next is uncertain. We live each moment of our lives on the threshold of the unknown. And so we live today in this time as we do in every moment of our lives, affirming that we are connected and covenanting to live in consensual relationships of mutuality affirming our moral obligation to use the time we have before us to make the world better. We live today in this time as we do every day, knowing that the solutions to the challenges that we face are not going to appear out of nowhere, and that if we're looking for divine intervention, we will find the hands of God at the end of our own two arms. We are called to do this work. We know that we are not helpless. We know that we have the power to make a difference. This is why we meet today online rather than in person. This is why we do whatever we can to protect ourselves and our loved ones, knowing that in so doing, we are protecting everyone. For if there was ever a demonstration of our seventh principle, the inherent worth and dignity of every person, we're living it. Our faith, our ability to embrace uncertainty, our determination to treat one another and all of life with respect, to see each other and every person as an extension of ourselves, is never so needed as it is needed in times such as these. And that, my friends, gives us a reason for hope. We will get through this. We like to use the word unprecedented, and surely in our lifetime, this situation may be. But pandemics like this, and probably far worse, have happened throughout history. None of those were met with any of the scientific and technological and medical uh, knowledge that we have today. And none of these were met with the ability to monitor the spread, understand the contagion and how it infects, know that we will in all likelihood be able to create a vaccine to combat this illness 
It just may take some time. And have the ability to communicate an effective response. And right now, that response is this. Don't congregate in groups. Take care of yourself. And please, wash your hands. Oh, by the way, stop hoarding toilet paper, please. <laughs> We can also help each other. We have the tools such as the ones we're using today. We have the ability to connect over distance, something that other people in other times who face these sort of situations did not have. We have the ability to be there with one another and for one another to comfort and to reassure, to help each other and to help those around us. In the midst of uncertainty, we have hope. It's in our DNA. It's who we are. I want to close with the words of Reverend Lynn Unger. She's the Minister of Lifespan Learning for the Unitarian Universalist Church of the Larger Fellowship, interestingly enough, our online church for those who don't have a UU congregation near them. Uh, this piece has been circulating on social media for the last several days, and it's a fitting reminder to everybody of who we are and how we can be in this time. pandemic. What if you thought of it in the ways the Jews considered the Sabbath, the most sacred of times? Cease from travel, cease from buying and selling. Give up, just for now, on trying to make the world different than it is. Sing, pray, Touch only those to whom you commit your life. Center down. And when your body has become still, reach out with your heart. Know that we are connected in ways that are terrifying and beautiful. You could hardly deny it now. Know that our lives are in one another's hands, and surely that has become clear. Do not reach out your hands, reach out your heart. Reach out your words, reach out all of the tendrils, the tendrils of compassion that move invisibly where we cannot touch. Promise this world your love. For better or for worse, in sickness and in health, so long as we all shall live. Let us be together in this time with one another. Many among us are afraid. Many among us are uncertain and unsure. We long for that certainty. We long for something to hold on to, something that tells us and reminds us that we will get through this. We find that in ourselves. We have some celebrations and some concerns that have been shared with us this morning. And let me just do a quick refresh. Richard, uh, Richard Galt shares with us this morning that a dear friend has tested positive for the virus. He has been to the hospital for, he's been in the hospital for 12 days. Richard asks that we send prayers for him and his partner who is home under quarantine. From uh, Jean and Kevin Jalbert, our concern is for all of us who have barely existent health care coverage. This has already made finances very tight for many of us. So this is a very scary time. We do have some thanksgivings that we will, uh, we will share in a moment as well. Even while we are not meeting in person, 
Our ministry continues. Let us be reminded that the work of this congregation is not diminished in these times. We are needed now more than ever. You can make your weekly offering now or at any time. We have created a shortened link to our PayPal donation account to make this easy. You should be seeing it on your screen in front of you. It is is.gd slash UUCM donate. Take a moment to write this down, and again, you can use this at any time. So let's take a moment and contemplate all of the things that we give thanks for, all of the things that we contribute to this world that needs us now. Thank you. And uh, now it's time for Thanksgivings. Uh, we do have a couple here that have been uh, sent in to the candles at uumeriden.org address. I'm, I'm thankful that we're able to do this, even though we're, we're struggling a little bit with some technical glitches and trying to figure out how to make all of this work. Uh, the fact that we're able not to so. have to sit alone in isolation, but, uh, but actually still share our, our Sunday worship together and uh, you know, and, and be here with each other and kind of keep our tradition alive. Um, that's all good. Um, another uh, celebration that was shared with us was, uh, was from John Seppels, and rather than my reading it, I'm going to switch it over to John and uh, um, let John uh, celebrate himself. Turn on his audio. There you go. So I am thankful that this week I found a new home. Uh, that has all the things that I was looking for and is affordable. And I thank uh, the team of people that helped me get there, um, including my parents, uh, my realtor, and the home inspector. Uh, they were all really great to work with. So we have from uh, Richard Galt as well, a celebration for Angelique and Marielle. Um, that they had the opportunity to sell all their Girl, Girl Scout cookies before the shutdown and will make their goal so that Marielle will be able to go to camp this summer. Um, and finally from Nancy Burton, lighting a candle of thanks to Jeff May, John Seppels, Reverend Tony, the Board of Trustees, and anyone worked to make this remote service possible 
and keeping the other activities of the church going as well as possible. So for all of these things, we give our thanks. And again, before we close our service this morning, um, just a reminder that we will be uh, uh, doing some more uh, special online events. Uh, we spoke uh, yesterday, the worship associates got together, we're talking about doing some, uh, some special events, maybe some interactive events on Wednesday evening. Uh, there'll be more of that forthcoming. Please uh, pay attention to what you see coming across your email. Um, and, uh, and on our website at uh, uumeriden.org, uh, we're going to try to, as much as possible, keep the, uh, keep the information flowing and keep a means of connection going uh, during this time when we're not meeting in person. And so let us leave now this virtual meeting house, this sanctuary that each one of us makes by our being together. Let us go knowing that we still have much work to do, that the work of our Unitarian Universalist faith is needed right now. Let us join together again, and in the meantime, may you live in blessing.
final remarks here before we uh, close our stream down. Uh, a reminder again that, uh, that we'll be doing uh, more of these online events. Uh, actually, far more than, than normal. I think that's going to be a, a good thing. And again, something that the Worship Associates spoke about uh, yesterday when we were on the phone. Um, also, uh, just a uh, uh, request, I guess, that uh, if you saw something today, or you didn't see something today, you know, and I understand, again, from a technical perspective, yeah, we've got some, some glitches to work out, but uh, uh, that uh, if there's some things that you think might work well in, uh, uh, in our worship services, in our online worship services while we're doing this, please share that with us. Worship at UUMeriden.org uh, goes to everybody on the Worship Associates team, and we'd love to hear kind of your input, your suggestions, your feedback, uh, make this as much a part of, uh, you know, your being part of our worship experience as, you know, as much as possible uh, as it would be if we were meeting together in, uh, in one place. I want to thank uh, John um, for, uh, for uh, joining us today virtually uh, over on the other side of town. Uh, actually, if you want to switch over to John for a second, see if John's got any final things that he'd like to add. And go. Uh, I'm thankful that uh, you all joined in with us this morning, uh, that I could be with you virtually. And I am also grateful that uh, my cat Gus was able to join me for worship this morning, uh, which we wouldn't be able to do in our regular format. So here's to trying new things. Um, and, uh, and you know, finally, thanks to Sandy, like I said, for, uh, for, for putting up with this new piece of software. Uh, thank you for, uh, for joining us and making it possible to be together this morning. Uh, thank you to Rebecca for joining us today and being our official candle lighter. And uh, uh, we, uh, we hope that uh, everyone has a good day, and we'll see you again next Sunday. Thank you. <laughs>